In this position, Khabib is putting so much pressure on Justin Gaethje's neck that it's causing the blood vessels to collapse down and limiting the blood supply to his brain, ultimately causing him to pass out. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Khabib Nurmagomedov retained his title at UFC 254 and in this video I'm gonna teach you about the physiology of what's going on inside Justin Gaethje's body here that causes him to pass out in this position. We'll also discuss what Gaethje brought up in his post-fight interview about whether or not this does have any long-term consequences. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, then please consider subscribing to the channel and be sure and go follow me over on Twitter Twitter for more real-time breakdowns and analysis. So this is just after Gaethje's tried to escape and slams Khabib back down. And yeah, he's trying to tap here. It is unfortunate that Jason Herzog didn't see this because it is true that the longer you have that choke applied limiting the blood flow, the more risk you have of long-term damage. But a few seconds like this isn't gonna make a difference. The key positions here to be aware of though are of course, this is Gaethje's right arm down here, kind of up against his neck. And so actually Khabib is pushing Gaethje's own arm into that right side of his neck. And then as we advance forward here, of course, we can see Khabib's right leg that's compressing directly onto the left neck of Gaethje. Now at this point, Gaethje is unconscious. He's experienced something we call syncope, which is the medical term for when someone passes out. We can see Jason Herzog come in and you know, shake his hand and Gaethje is clearly unconscious here. Even when Gaethje rolls over onto his back here at the end and you can see his eyes open, he's not alert, he's not responding. He's still probably unconscious at this point and is just starting to recover now that the blood flow has been restored to his brain, which we'll talk about next. So to our anatomy here, what I've done is tried to highlight the key blood vessels in the neck, in the skull, and some relevant anatomy with the muscles to help you establish some landmarks. So this big flat muscle that we see, one running on either side, is called the sternocleidomastoid. If I push on the right side of my chin and try to bring my chin down against my hand, that muscle you can feel bulging right here is this sternocleidomastoid. Now just on the outside of the sternocleidomastoid is our first blood vessel, and it's a vein called the external jugular vein. In this picture here, the blue are veins and the red are arteries. The veins are returning blood from the body back down to the heart, and the arteries are where blood is going from the heart out to the body. If we hide our sternocleidomastoid muscles, now we can start to see some of those deeper blood vessels, of which of course we then have the internal jugular vein, which is gonna be bigger than that external one. And then behind that external jugular vein, we have our common carotid artery. Now the common carotid arteries are gonna branch off into the internal and the external carotid artery, similar to how we have an internal and an external jugular vein. Now, I've hit a lot of other stuff here to clean this up even more, and you can get a sense of just how important this carotid artery is to the blood supply of the brain. The blood flow into the brain tissue is coming from two primary sources. The first is gonna be the internal carotid artery, which is this guy right here kind of sitting back behind that jugular vein. But that internal carotid artery is gonna go up and branch off into a lot of the major blood vessels in the brain. But that's a branch of this common carotid. So if you occlude or pinch the common carotid artery down here, that's gonna limit the blood supply that's able to travel further up into the internal carotid and up into the brain. Like anything else in the body, the brain needs blood flow to survive. Whenever Gaethje is being choked in this position, what's happening is Khabib is causing compression to be applied to these carotid blood vessels within Gaethje's neck, as well as the jugular veins. When those arteries get compressed for long enough, that decreases the blood flow that's getting to the tissue in the brain and causes you to pass out. If the blood flow is cut off for a longer period of time, you can actually get permanent death of those tissues in the brain. Now there is kind of a specific sequence of events occurring here whenever Khabib has Justin in this position. Veins are a lot flimsier than arteries. They might look a little bit bigger here on the anatomy picture, but they're much thinner wall, they're much floppier, which means they're easier to squeeze and compress. So early on in the sequence here, as soon as Khabib gets his legs around Gaethje's neck, that's enough pressure to already start causing compression of those jugular veins. What that's primarily gonna do is cause impaired return of blood from the face back down to the heart, and so it can make the fighter feel like there's just a lot of pressure being built up kind of in the outside of the face, and it's gonna be very uncomfortable. Now, as this whole sequence continues, of course, Khabib is able to put more and more pressure on Gaethje's neck, which then causes those carotid arteries to compress, causing the blood supply to the brain to be shut off and ultimately for Gaethje to pass out. Now, a couple of interesting points here. We, of course, could see that Gaethje's arm was actually in between Khabib's leg and his neck. His arm being pushed up is only gonna cause 
kind of additional surface contact for more compression along the entire right side of his neck. So this certainly didn't help Gaethje that his arm was stuck in there because not only could he not use that arm to try to escape, that arm was just causing all that tissue to be pushed even further up into his neck, compressing those blood vessels even more. The other thing that didn't help Gaethje here is before he ultimately passed out, we can see him lift up the entirety of Khabib's 155 plus pound body, basically with like his neck and his back. As he's doing that, Gaethje is having to generate a tremendous amount of intrathoracic pressure by basically bearing down to allow him to try to exhibit that force to lift up Khabib. When you exhibit that hard intrathoracic pressure from bearing down to do something like this, it's only gonna impair more of the blood flow back to your heart, which puts you in a bad position when you're in the sequence of getting choked out like this, limiting the blood flow already to your brain. We can see basically right after he drops Khabib back to the ground, he knew it was over. As soon as he went down was when he first started to tap here. So you could tell he already knew he was in trouble and that was his last ditch effort. And probably around this point was when he started to black out. Now, interestingly, one thing, whenever somebody passes out, they often talk about their vision kind of blurring away and kind of graying out. Whenever this is happening, you're actually losing blood supply to the ophthalmic artery going to your eye, which is what causes your vision to go away. This is one of the earlier stages of someone having syncope and is probably something that Gaethje experienced here knowing that he was about to pass out. Now, Gaethje talked after the fight about how he actually wasn't that disappointed that he got choked out because like he said, you just kind of fall asleep and wake back up, but you don't have any permanent damage. For the most part here, Gaethje is correct. Now compared to somebody getting bludgeoned like we saw happen with Tony Ferguson, that is without a doubt way more long-term injury and damage than somebody getting choked out. Whenever the blood supply to the brain is being limited like this for just on the order of you know five to 10 seconds like it was here for Gaethje, as far as we know, there isn't any risk to the brain with that. Now, of course, to cause that restricted blood flow, you can sometimes twist the neck and so you can cause neck injuries doing this. There are some instances where people can have really sensitive areas in their blood vessels where you regulate your heart rate and blood pressure, where if something like this happens, you can kind of get this excessive response where your blood pressure and everything else can be really thrown off. But other than that, Gaethje's right here. Compared to taking a bunch of punches to the face, there isn't the equivalent long-term risk. Obviously, the longer that you restrict the blood flow to the brain, then you do start having permanent damage when you've had death of that brain tissue, which is why it's always nice if we see the referees notice the tap early on before a guy actually goes to sleep. But again, when it's on the order of just a few seconds, it's not gonna make any difference. So that's it for the video, everybody. I hope you learned something here about what's going on inside the body when a fighter passes out like this and get some appreciation for the complex anatomy in those blood vessels of our neck. Let me know any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.